right, this is the spoiler full edition of Talkie Box, where we are talking about Avengers Infinity War. Spoilers. Spoiler alert. Spoilers ahead. It's going to be in the title. Spoiling you. If you are watching this and you have not seen Infinity War, turn it off or crawl under a rock. Go see that movie. Or you, I guess you can still watch it. I mean, no, whatever. Dave. They missed their chance. <laughs> All right, okay. so let's talk Infinity War. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some spoilers. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about uh, missing characters. Yep. We're going to talk about dead characters. Yep. We're going that to happened. That happened, guys. Uh, and we're going to talk about what's uh, to come. What's to come, yeah. and our feeling on the plot, and, and how everything went. So, so first off, missing characters. Missing characters. Uh, it actually mentions in the movie, uh, Clint and Scott, uh, Hawkeye, and Ant Man are not in the movie. They are sitting it out. Yeah. So they they mention sitting it out because they are working with their family stuff because they're the only two of the of the heroes that have families. Family, family, yeah. They really have families to, to look out for. So I felt like they did a pretty good job in explaining why those characters aren't in the movie. Mm -hmm. There are a few characters that they did not explain in any way, shape, or form yeah. why they are not in the movie or mm -hmm. what happened to them in general. Right. And so so the main ones being. The ones that were in Thor right. Ragnarok. Ragnarok, right. And because that led directly into this movie, so there's three characters off the top of my head right mm -hmm. there being Valkyrie, Korg, and Meek. Yep. Who are all fantastic characters and not in this movie. So what happens is at the very end of Thor Ragnarok, as they're getting on this ship with all the Asgardians, mm -hmm. uh, and they're talking about, you know, Asgard is a people, Asgard is saved, da 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 da. And they come up like, oh, what's this? And it's a big ship. Yep. Watch Black Panther. Come back. That ship, when they're meeting that ship, is the beginning of Infinity War. Yep. And you just see death and destruction everywhere on this ship. Dead bodies everywhere. The ship's getting destroyed. Yep. Thor's got his ass kicked. Loki's got his ass kicked. So Heimdall's got his ass kicked. Heimdall's got his ass kicked. But Asgardians are basically extinct at this point. I mean... It seems that way. Well, but no Valkyrie... It does, no Korg and no Meek. Well, it does mention that he only killed half of them. And so that is one of the possible explanations of where those characters are. Potentially but see now, see now, that, that's pretty fucked up, though, because, because when it's all said and done, he really killed a quarter of them. I mean, three quarters of them, if you think about it. If he killed half of them before he snapped his fingers. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. So... They never tell you what happened to Valkyrie or Korg or right. Meek. Don't even, you don't even see their dead bodies. They don't, they're not mentioned Nothing. whatsoever. And I feel like Valkyrie would have been a formidable counts. opponent. Yep. So why wasn't she in the fray? Or where was her dead body? Yeah. It seemed to me that she was going to be a love interest of Thor, and now this movie has put all of that into doubt. Yeah. Now, Korg and Meek, I kind of get because Korg was actually played by the director of Thor Ragnarok. And so... That and it, sense, and he, it, he was a completely different character than who Korg was in the in the in, comics. In yeah. the comics, you know, Korg in the movie was you know just this kind of timid, weird New Zealand rock creature, <laughs> and just and like was really fuck with arms, yeah, with, with blades for arms, yeah. But then in in the comics, I believe Korg is a villain. He was part of a a race that the Avengers fought, I think, or Thor fought. Um, I don't know if he was always a villain, but he was definitely a bad guy at one point. Now, there's another character that was missing mm -hmm. that wasn't actually missing, but kind of. Mm -hmm. Hulk. Yeah. Hulk. I'm actually really glad that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Hulk really kind of shit the bed a little bit for me, and I understand why they did it for the movie, and you have to see Thor Ragnarok to kind of understand where Bruce Banner and Hulk are at yeah. this point, because Thor Ragnarok was as much... A Hulk movie as it was a Thor movie. Yeah. Um, it really epitomizes the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde like struggle. Yep. Yeah. Bruce Banner absolutely. It was there. the first time you ever saw Hulk and Bruce Banner actually communicate directly with one another. Mm -hmm. When they when he was in the Hulk Buster Iron Man armor. He was like trying to talk to him and get He's him like, go, oh, and he's no. like, no. no. Yeah. And then he comes back. So Hulk was absent, and I think that made a big play. Hulk did fight Thanos briefly at the beginning. At the beginning. Um, and that's and, and that's why I think he what he he do I think Hulk's like no Hulk fuck is that. scared like it's the he's, one person that actually straight up beat the shit out of him because it's not something he's used to yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you I think that's very much the psychology behind why they did that 
But one thing that really throws me off, and my boyfriend and I were discussing it, is if Bruce Banner dies, mm -hmm. Hulk also, by de facto, dies too. Yeah. So you would think, in the interest of self-preservation, I mean, in the first few movies, he's, he's like spitting out bullets to avoid dying. And that's, and that's the thing, like, I, I wonder if he could die. Like, would the Hulk actually let Bruce Banner die? Mm -hmm. Would he step up at that point and be like, so did he never no, feel in danger? Because well, I mean, everyone I else like, did. I feel I'm sure like the Bruce Hulk Banner felt in danger. But you also have to think about what kind of a tormented creature the Hulk has to be. Yeah. Like, does the Hulk want to live? Because you have to remember that in the first Avengers movie, when they bring Mark Ruffalo in to play Bruce Banner, he talks about suicide briefly. Yeah. He said, "I put a gun in my mouth. I put a bullet in my mouth, and the, and the Hulk spit it out." Yeah, I put a bullet. I put a bullet in my mouth, and the other guy spit it out. Yeah. They called him the other guy for a little while, right? And yeah. the other guy spit it out. So Hulk can't die by traditional means. We know that, but does that mean that Hulk wants to be alive? True. What and it, especially in Thor Ragnarok, he even talks about like. How no one wants Hulk on Earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Hulk says that. Not Bruce Banner. Hulk says that. Hulk recognizes that people are terrified of him. Yeah. And and he doesn't want to be... And, and like anybody, he, he doesn't want to be around people who don't want him. I was just waiting for the Hulk to bust out of the Hulk Buster armor. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't happen. It never... Yeah, you never get that satisfaction. So, like, yeah, you, you, you miss that. You get a lot of other brief little appearances now, throughout. Now, is he one of the ones that disappeared? Bruce Banner and Hulk? No. No, no they, they were still there. Okay. Yeah. Because maybe they're going to develop onto that. Because I can imagine after, you know, all is said and done, in the next movie, all his buddies are going to look at him and be like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Hulk's kind of getting a raw deal, though, because I don't, I think we're too far into Hulk now mm -hmm. with all of these, you know, auxiliary movies that he's done. Hulk's not going to get a standalone movie, not unless it's Planet Hulk. Right. And Planet Hulk is, that'd Which be they, an undertaking. They already did. They did it, it in Ragnarok. That was, that was in Ragnarok. So that's not going to happen. So um, um, Hulk, not there. Yeah. Bit of a disappointment. Also, a couple other characters that... <laughs> one, There's one character I know why, why they weren't there, and the other one, and another one I'm not sure why. Uh, one of them being Sif. Sif, um, yeah. Who, is, who we, know, we met in the first Thor movie. Uh, I think she was also in Thor 2. First yeah. Thor movie, Have you not? I have not. Yeah. So I'm yeah. missing a good bit of Thor backstory. Sif, yeah. Sif was, was also an Asgardian warrior. She was a woman. She was very powerful, mm -hmm. very awesome, and... And she has been a love interest of Thor in the comics in the past. Um, and I, I know she was in the first movie. I think she was in the second she movie. She was in the second she movie. She was not in the third. She was not. Um, they killed off the Warriors 3 in the third Thor movie. They sure did. Uh, which was a big deal. It was. And, and I don't feel like anybody really addressed that because, like... Because they, they did it quick. They did it real quick, you know. Um, just walking in there. Yeah. And, like, Ray, Ray Stevenson. Mm -hmm. Like, just... As soon as Hela walks in, just yep. kills Ray Stevenson right then and there, and then shoop, 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 kills all the rest of them. Yeah. And you're Except standing for there. Hogan, who, show, who shows up a little bit later, but she also kills him pretty quick. Yeah. So. It's, it's, uh. That's pretty much how the Loki death felt for me. Like, he's been a huge oh, antagonist yeah. in past movies, and for him to die, mm -hmm. and just, like, the way. But I feel died. like, I feel like it was, it was a good death, though. Like, he, he went he out. He went, fighting. he went out as a hero. Yeah. Now. But in, hold on, because Sif is another thing. Uh, I did find out uh, the reason Sif wasn't in the movie. They approached uh, Jamie Alexander, the, the the actress, to be in it uh, a couple weeks before shooting started, and she couldn't do it. She, you know, her schedule was full. Yeah. And so it was like it was all. I, I don't know if it was an afterthought on their part. Like, oh, maybe we should have her in it because we haven't talked seen her in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then yeah. she didn't make it. So the other, she's outside of the movie. They yeah. Prevented her from the the other character that I really want to see, and I hope, I hope he shows up in the in the next Avengers movie, Phil Coulson. Coulson. Yeah. Yeah, I believe. Um, my my understanding is that Coulson will be in Captain Marvel. Okay. Um, Who's this? Phil Coulson was the guy who died in the first Avengers movie. Who didn't actually die. Who, in order to like bring the Avengers together, okay, and okay. then he's the main character of Agents of Shield on ABC. So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And he was in Black. No. Nope. No, 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 no. 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 Um, so he has not been in a Marvel movie and not a Marvel feature since, since Avengers. Yeah. But he's had his own show going on for five seasons I've now. I've never seen the and Agents of Shield. You've, you've watched it with me a couple episodes here and there. Yeah, I've never watched um, Agents of Shield. That's the one part of the MCU that I have not watched. I really I really enjoy the show. I love what they're doing with it. I love the things, but I've always I've you know, these characters that I've been watching for five years now, I want to see them get their moment in the movies. 
Yeah. Mm. It's time. Um, it's time it for is. them to start coming over. Just like it's going to be time really soon for Netflix to the defenders and to, yeah. to bring the defenders into the fray. They're nowhere near as powerful as the Avengers. Right. But the defenders do have their own merits. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you also have uh, Runaways on Hulu and stuff, which I don't think they're going to bring in for a while. And if they do Civil War 2, mm. if, and yeah. I, I would love it if they did, the Runaways and the um, Defenders, as you know, because mm. you've read that one with me, definitely play a part. Yeah. small yeah. part, but a part in that comic. So, so now let's talk about death. Mm. This movie was riddled with it. Oh, yeah. And they, they hit you real hard at first. Um, by killing one of the most beloved villain slash anti heroes Loki. in the franchises, Loki. even like the yeah. first five minutes too. Before that, they killed Heimdall. They killed and Heimdall. That upset me because mm -hmm. I love Heimdall and I love Idris Elba. Yep, I think he's a fantastic actor. I think he's done a great job with, with Heimdall. And so we lose Heimdall, and, we lose Loki. Yep, we and lose Heimdall, we lose Loki. Um, we lose a couple other people before the before the you, snap. You lose Gamora, Gamora. Yep. and uh, you lose Vision. Mm-hmm. So... You lose Vision twice. He straight up dies twice. Yep. Yeah. So... <sighs> that sucks. <laughs> um, now, but I will... I'm going to say this. If you went into this movie thinking that no one was going to die, you were naive. You were a fool. Yeah. Like, you had to know that at least one person was going to die and probably more. Yeah. Like, I Because was in not... comic books, that's how it works. Oh, yeah. And... The MCU has grown and expanded mm -hmm. to its own comic book, yeah. really. It's its own giant tapestry of these characters. They have to die at some point. Oh, yeah. They're going to die. Not only one because of like physical restraints with the actors and aging and things like that, but also because there's always a torch to be passed. You yeah. know, There's been so many different um, Captain Americas. Mm -hmm. There's been so many different... Black Widows or whatever, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's actually true, but <laughs> there have been a ton of different, you know, there's been a lot of different Spider-Man. Yeah. So, like... My favorite superheroes were a result of another superhero dying, so... Yeah. Who's that? Captain Marvel. Uh, there was originally a male version of mm -hmm. him that was not as successful or popular. And, and they then, killed him off to make Carol Danvers, who was originally Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. and Captain then Marvel. Captain and then yeah. uh, Kamala Khan took over the Miss Marvel mantle. True. And she's awesome. So... You have a lot of deaths mm -hmm. leading up to it, including Gamora, mm -hmm. to for Thanos to get the Soul Stone, right. mm -hmm. um, which actually really tore Thanos up. Which one of the things I loved about this movie is they don't give you a two dimensional villain. Yeah, they yeah. humanize Thanos. Yeah, Human, very... he's very humanized. Like you see the anguish in his face. The Fantastic performance by Josh Brolin, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I will say, the CGI on Josh Brolin's face, people can talk shit all they want. Some of the best mocap face I've seen in yeah. any movie I didn't ever. have any issues with it. No yeah. issues whatsoever. Like, very convincing. Um, there, and there, were, there were some issues I had. I don't know if it's really a writing issue or an acting issue or something. But, but leading up to Gamora's death, when, when the Red Skull, by the way, Red Skull shows up, he sure does. When he tells him that, you know, you have to give up something you love in order to, to whatever, like, immediately he's like, well, he's killing Gamora. Yeah. Like, I knew that. How did Gamora not realize that? Gamora kind of, like, taunted him a little bit, too. Yeah. Like, you, like, you don't lose. love anything. And he's like, obviously he loves you. It's been pushing that this whole movie so Which is right. another thing that I thought was really, really cool, how that was one of the ways that they humanized him was by developing his relationship with yeah. Gamora. It wasn't just a... I'm killing half your planet. I'm just going to kidnap this little girl. It was like, this is a sweet little girl. She's fiery. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take her under my wing. And in that little interaction with young Gamora, you can see, like, he legitimately cared about her. Like, yeah. he really was trying to raise her. And that moment when, he when she stabs him, like, you can see, like, he's betrayed for just a second. Yeah. And then he kind of, like turns it back over and like, all right, well, I got to be the mad god again. Mm -hmm. um, but just was really, really cool how they developed that. Uh, Red Skull, actually one of the few recasts in the Marvel so Cinematic. So it wasn't Hugo Weaving. It was not Hugo okay. Weaving. That's something I was talking about with someone else. Like, we couldn't, I wasn't sure if the voice was right. It wasn't. And, I, and no. as I watched it, when I first heard the voice, I'm like, Hugo, no. That's yeah. not, like, I didn't need to look at the face. I could hear it in the voice that it mm -hmm. wasn't Hugo Weaving. Um... But I, I 
thought it was pretty cool how they brought him back yeah. in. Just for that one little scene, like, mm -hmm. I couldn't handle the power of the Tesseract. I've been sent here to, like, help pe guide people towards yeah. something I can never possess. Now, I've read the reasoning for that is they, they, they replaced uh, the embodiment of death Mr. with Stone. Red Bull. Or, yeah. With Rebel. With Red Skull. Red Rebel. Skull. <laughs> Which is ironic because in the comics, in Infinity Gauntlet in the comics, Thanos decides to gather the Infinity Stones, or the Soul Gems as they were called, into the Infinity Gauntlet to destroy half the universe For because death. he had fallen in literal love with, with the embodiment of yes. death. And then the embodiment of death betrays him mm -hmm. and joins the Avengers in fighting him later. Right. Which is... I think blah, 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 blah. I think I I love all the parallels there and just the depth to that, but I kind of like what they did better because you know they did you know it just created more logic and yeah. reason. I think created more why logic. He's actually doing as opposed to you know I just want to impress my girlfriend. <laughs> and it, 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 it's it's just that another that other interconnected piece mm -hmm. in the same way that Thor Ragnarok mentions Xandar and you see everybody knew that Thor would be the first one to run into the the Guardians of the Galaxy right. So once you see that, and then you're like, all right, well, that's how that connects, and we have Xandar here, and then we have uh, Asgard, and now we're going to connect the Red Skull from Captain America with Thanos and the Guardians and the Gems, and it just... And it really... Uh, they just leaves really it all together. to the world now. I mean, we live in a world of competing resources mm -hmm. and overpopulation, so it's definitely, you know, in this superhero world of things that we can't really fathom... Mm -hmm. Or understand it brings that little piece of reality. Like I can understand hunger and famine. Yeah. These are things I hear about on the yep. news. And then it just connects it to all the other stories that have been going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I will say there were things in this movie that uh, I didn't get to see that I wanted to. And one of them, like when Thanos first shows up, he's already got the power stone. He's already got it, and he mentions he got it from Xandar. We don't see that. Uh, but we don't get to see him go up against the Nova Corps. No. Mm -hmm. Um, you just assume that Glenn, Co Glenn Close and John C. Riley, mm -hmm. and because all like from what they said, Xandar was it was decimated. It was decimated, yeah. completely destroyed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, and it, it never it doesn't specify if he only killed half like he does a lot of places, or if he just completely got rid of everybody. But like, I still wanted to see that. I wanted to see something, mm -hmm. and then really and, ironic because decimate means to literally to kill one in every ten. Yeah, technically it does. Um, but also, and then, uh, when he gets the, um, reality stone, the red one, yep. the ether, mm -hmm. it doesn't really, it, it does, it does play off the reality stone to kind of do that whole thing, but I also would have loved to have seen him actually get it from the collector. Right. They, 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 they kind of fowed that out, but like, made you think like, this is what's happening. You're seeing him get the reality stone yeah. when in reality... <laughs> he, just, he had already had it, and yeah. he was just like recreating it to capture them. Right. Um, which means you have to assume that the collector is dead. Right. Collector is definitely dead. Mm -hmm. um, and much of his collection. Much of his collection. Yeah. No Howard the Duck this time. No. No. Though you did Duck. see no the, Cosmo. You did see the never. You saw Never Nude from Arrested Development. Though. I did not. I didn't see that, but I also didn't never watch Arrested Development. Yeah. I did read something about that later on. Now, um, um, let's talk. About the one part, like, let's get to all the rest of the deaths. Mm -hmm. Thanos the snaps death? his fingers. Yeah. The big death. The one that threw me off the most, right? And so it starts half off... the universe is gone. Starts off with Bucky Barnes. Yeah. All right? White Wolf, Winter Soldier, whatever you want to call him. Just he just walks up, he's like, Steve. And then <sighs> he falls on the ground, like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? And then they psych you out for a second. You have, um... Uh... I can never remember her name, from Walking Dead, Michonne. Michonne. Yeah. Um, you have her character lying on the ground. You hear T'Challa coming up and be like, hey, come on, we got to get out of here. And you, you, you assume can't... it's going to be her. You mm -hmm. assume it's going to be her. And like, I was dreading it, like, oh my God, they're going to kill her. And you already see the dust coming up, and you think it's her hand, and then it just pans over, and it's T'Challa. T'Challa's yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. And then they just start really just hammering it in. Yeah. Like, First off, the way that they killed Vision... Fucking crazy. Really fucking crazy. Wanda destroys the the Mind Stone, all which, for not. which all of the work that they've been doing was all for naught. You found out in that moment that yep. even if like, they had removed the Mind Stone and put it somewhere safe, he Vision would have been died. Yeah. He, he would have died no matter what. 
And Which is interesting because Doctor Strange says it's the only way. Mm -hmm. Before you see all this total carnage. But here's the thing. Well, I mean, he that's... never uses the time stone. He has it this whole time. No, he used it to find out that this was the only way. That's that's actually something I thought was really cool. He is meditates like, on is like he, he goes through and he, and he even says he's looked at like 14 million different possibilities. And there's only and one. There's only one way for, for us to win. And and that's got to be what happened. Yeah. Like And just because we win doesn't mean everybody's okay. Yeah. There's only one way for it to end in our favor. Yeah. Like, only one way to defeat Thanos. Not necessarily one way to win. Yeah. Well, only one way to defeat Thanos. Defeating Thanos isn't necessarily victory. No. But, you know, he goes through all that and, like, you assume that that's how it's going to be. That's the only time he really uses the Time Stone. Mm -hmm. I do feel like they underutilized yeah. Doctor Strange in a lot of ways. Like, bit. once everybody else had been taken out of the fight, then he multiplies, yeah. and then he uses the red bands. Get the fuck out of here. There were there several things where, like, even there was another big thing that irritated me about the Doctor Strange thing was that uh, early, like, way early in the movie, you see uh, they're fighting on Earth still. Mm -hmm. They're fighting a the really big guy, and at one point they make a portal. The guy's hand goes through it. They cut off his hand. Doesn't that seem like a great way to get that gauntlet off of Thanos? It does. It, it doesn't seem like fucking hand. something Thanos would fall for, though. Because, you know, in addition to Thanos being powerful, well, he's just super... I mean, but once, it also it all depends on it all depends on how long he can op how, like how long it takes him to open up the portal with the sling yeah. ring. Like mm -hmm. if he's doing this while Thanos punching at him and he hasn't opened the portal up all the way, then he's getting a fist through his chest. But well, I mean, once once they had him mesmerized and everything, if Peter Quill didn't come in and fuck shit up, yeah, they could have done it at that point. They could. Like they were trying to pull it off. And they it almost had it all like like you like 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 you saw and like it's it was such like a right desperate moment. It was too. right here, yeah. And then he woke up and he grabbed it and slid it it's back so on. So right. sad too. But, that whole with when he finds out. <sighs> but yeah. I think where it really started to intensify was when Spider Man died. Yep. Gosh, that was so emotional. When Spider-Man died... And the way they show that to you, too, is just him begging for his life. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't right. want to go. I'm sorry, Mr. Stark. That one really got Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... They really built up this father-son mm -hmm. so relationship got... between the two, which yeah. is kind of beautiful in a way because, you know, uh, Iron Man himself wasn't close to his father. Mm -hmm. And I think, and like, he definitely Peter has taken... So... He's definitely taken Peter under his wing. Yeah. So you've got... Let's, let's list them off as best we can remember. Loki, Heimdall, mm -hmm. Gamora, yep. Collector, yep. Um, Vision, Groot, Groot, Mantis, Mantis, Drax, Drax, Drax. Um, Chris Pratt, Star Lord, Star Lord, <laughs> Spider Man, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, T'Challa, yep. uh, Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier, um, who else was dead from the actual Avengers? Falcon, Falcon. Uh, not just Falcon, but Brody? No, Rhodey, uh, Rhodey's still around. Rhodey's still around. Scarlet Witch? Scarlet Witch? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's 15. That yeah. 15 deaths that we can remember off the top of our head. Big deaths. 15. Yeah. I mean, if we're Important. taking out some of those, some of the smaller the characters. Are pretty much decimated. I, yeah. I, would, I would say. Except for Rocket. Except for Rocket. I would say at least 11 or 12 major deaths. Yes. Now, but, do, but you notice that of all of them, the ones that are still around. Are the, the main Avengers? Are the main Avengers? Mm -hmm. Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, um, Hulk. Hulk, Hulk, yeah, Scarlet Witch. No, uh, not not the Scarlet Witch, Black Widow. Black Widow. Okay. But um, like, I've been. Are we just playing assuming too? Are we assuming in this scenario that Hawkeye and Ant Man are okay? I don't know. Maybe we, we don't, don't know. really know. And that's another thing we can talk about is that you know th those are the two characters that weren't or, or two main characters that weren't there. Uh, we do know that Ant Man and the Wasp takes place the the movie the next movie coming out in a couple months takes place, place before, before Infinity War, so we should find out at least what's been going on with Scott and maybe where he is when all this starts. Yeah. And maybe and where Clint is. Maybe Hawkeye will be in it. That we were talking earlier, Hawkeye and, and Ant Man didn't really have any interaction up to this point. So it'd be good um, to get them except for at the at when they first get actually I uh, thinking back on it, in Civil War Ant Man or Hawkeye is the one that goes and picks up Ant Man like he's he's got him in the van. Yeah. But that's pretty much the only interaction they have. So let's talk about resurrections. Now I assume that some of them have to be resurrected. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I want to talk about who I think now, are perma dead. I want to talk talked about a perma bit before this, and you had ideas, and I told you you were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so first off, Loki, uh -huh. he's done. 
I think anybody who died before the snap is just automatically. I think with the dead. with the exception of Gamora, right? Because I I had a discussion with you, I had a discussion with somebody else. With the exception of Gamora, mm -hmm. I think anybody who died before the snap yep. is permanently dead. I think Heimdall is definitely dead. Definitely. I think Loki is probably dead, but there's it's Loki. There's always a chance. No, He's probably no. dead. I agree with you. But Loki's always dead. A chance. I, I feel almost certainly Gamora is dead. I don't think so. I think she's coming back. I, I think sad, she's. I think she's I... in the Soul Stone. Okay. That she's, could be. I think she is inside the Soul Stone because yeah. the Soul Stone has to have a soul. Yeah, she was killed that makes sense. for the Soul Stone. I think she's inside. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's. I can logical. tell you this. I. I. We know for a fact that Spider Man's coming back because he has another movie coming out. Mm -hmm. Doctor Strange. Has to Doctor come back. Strange has to come back because he's got to have another movie too because it did so well. I Black think the Panther, Guardians have to come back because they're so marketable and so successful. Most of them have to come back. Drax might not. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, he's not my favorite. I think uh, Drax I think, is. I I he's love funny, Drax. Funny, but I could do without him too. I know Star Lord's coming back. I know Groot's coming back because yeah. Groot's coming back. Groot's Groot has back. to come back. And mm -hmm. Gamora's coming back because I think she has to for the story. Drax is the only one I think might be expendable. I and I'll be know. honest. But what about Rocket what about could actually end up dying? I would be crushed. I, I don't. Love I Rocket. don't think they'll kill Rocket. I no. love Rocket. I think that if any of them don't come back, it would probably be Mantis. I think she'll she's, come back because she's only been in two movies so far. She's also kind of. I agree with him. If anyone's going to go, it's maybe Mantis or Drax. I think it's Drax. If if any of them, but who knows? But um, I uh, Vision. Let's talk about Vision really quick. I think Vision will come back, but he'll be different. He will not be the same guy that died. You think I think it'll be sense. the same actor, don't get me wrong. But I think his personality is going to change because I think the Mind Stone was a big part of it. It was, but they also had a discussion about how many layers was on it. Like, there's Jarvis, Jarvis there's yeah. Friday, there's Tony, mm -hmm. there's Tony and Ultron, Bruce and Ultron, there's Bruce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's all of these different people that embodied and created Vision. Yeah. They're like, well, maybe it's not all tied into the Mind Stone. If he does come back, He'll still have the same powers, which were also completely underutilized in this movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Completely underutilized. But that's also because they were trying to keep him away from everything. Yeah, because yeah. of the mind stuff. Yeah. Now, one, one, let me just, I'm going to break off on a brief tangent. Mm -hmm. There was one super, super powered villain that I feel like I don't understand why they were working for Thanos, and that's Ebony Maw. I don't know why Ebony Maw was working for Thanos. Which one was Ebony Maw? Ebony Maw was the one with the telekinesis Squidward. who would like slice open Squidward, yeah. Okay. <laughs> who could slice open cars and shit like yeah. that. Like super powered villain. The only thing I can think of is that he looked at it as a religion situation and and Thanos was his god. He's very powerful because Thanos allows him to be. I think that's how he looked at it. That's that's possible. Um brilliant way that they killed him though. Um, yeah, you ever seen this old movie called Aliens? <laughs> it was it was great, um, but I think that with where we are now, mm -hmm. we get to the post credits. Okay, we also did not mention that um, uh, Nick Fury, Nick Fury, and, and, Maria, Hill. and Maria Hill also make bit a, the dust. No pun Fury intended. And died, yep, yeah. and um, they're both coming back. They're both coming back, and we get that tease for Captain Marvel. Captain yes. Marvel, Carol Danvers. Now, my understanding, I'm not incredibly familiar with Captain Marvel. My understanding is is it is one of the most powerful characters she, in the MCU. Yes. So she's part Kree. Okay. Um, she, From Guardians of the Galaxy. And mm -hmm. various other things. They, yeah. They've also had a part in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, did they mention somewhere else? I can't remember. No, I, I, I did see something but now. the Kree's alone are super powerful. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. see something in... Um, in the credits, in, the, in like the build cast mm -hmm. for Captain Marvel, and Lee Pace is going to be in that movie. Okay. Who is that? Lee Pace played Ronan the Accuser. He played Ronan the Accuser in oh, okay. Guardians of the Galaxy, who was a Kree. He was guy. a Kree. So that actually makes sense to me that he might be in it because if she is part Kree, then they have to bring, they have to talk about the Kree stuff. And Tie it in. It makes sense that he's going to be a part of it, which it, is cool because it, I, I really like Lee Pace. I, I like Lee actor. Pace a lot. So I'm curious because I know Captain Marvel takes place in the 1990s. Yes. So I don't think, and it actually comes out very shortly before the next Avengers movie. Now I'm wondering where they're going to start with her because there's, like, Captain Marvel is, like, as her role as Captain Marvel is relatively new, but she's been in comics since, I want to say the 60s? It's pr quite a while. I she think was... long enough that when, when Rogue of the X-Men 
Avengers came around, Rogue got like mm-hmm. a lot of her, the powers that we know of Rogue with her flight and and mm-hmm. super strength. She she stole from Cat from Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. And before Miss Marvel, Carol was actually part of. I want to say she was in the Air Force, mm-hmm. so she was like this. She was a Colonel Colonel, colonel Danvers, Danvers. Yeah, I, which I, is I, going to be in the like that's going to be part of the movie. I'm I'm gonna say right now I don't believe that they will incorporate the old male Captain Marvel in any way. I think it'll just be Carol Danvers as the one and only Captain Marvel. Um, They they might actually do it very similar to uh, Green Lantern, where um, you know you have this guy and 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 now that I think about it, it's very it's actually very similar to Green Lantern because they were both in the Air Force Mm -hmm. and they both meet up with some alien and. There's your powers. So, so I don't know. My, my thought is, is you're going to have Captain Marvel. You're going to see her development, her trend, whatever, over the, the course of the 1990s, because that's when it's set. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to find out, find, out, find out where she goes. Yeah. Because she hasn't been present for any of this shit. No. Right. So she's gone, and she's isolated, is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Well, we also made a reference in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in the post-credits to Adam Warlock. Yes. Because the yeah. gold people, I can't remember their name. Um, uh, well, his cocoon showed up in in I wanna say, Thor. Yeah, I want to say Thor. They, when they, when or they, when or we first see the collector's collection, um, there is a, a box and it's got Adam Warlock's cocoon. Yeah, apparently he's in a cocoon sometimes. You see his um, cocoon at the end of and Guardians then you of the see Galaxy. It again at the end, end of Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy. Two. Yeah, um, so I think that Adam Warlock is definitely coming into play because they haven't addressed that at all. That yeah. he's going to be a big part of Captain Marvel. Carol could be with Alpha Flight, so that's something in her newer development. Newer, she's part of the Galactic Alpha Flight is one of her big things. So that Ooh. could be something she's doing. She's uh, paired up with a lot of the the Canadian like B-rated um, superheroes like Sasquatch mm-hmm. and the Snowbird and mm-hmm. North Star. And I, I feel like I feel like they're they're gonna be putting Captain Marvel into some sort of hibernation, mm-hmm. same similar to what they did with Captain America. Because she's gone. And you would think that if she is a part of the Galactic Force and all this other stuff, that she would be privy to hear about, you know, all this universe-ending bullshit that's happening across the galaxy. And she yeah. might want to step in. Yeah. So I feel like she's definitely, like, isolated, hibernating, something like that. I do agree that uh, Adam Warlock will be involved in the Captain mm-hmm. Marvel movie, but I do want to remember that this is taking place in the 1990s. Mm-hmm. Adam Warlock may be about... But he's going to go back into his cocoon, yeah. and that's and, I and think then we're gonna have to see him released from that cocoon later. Right. And it, and for all I know, she could be in that cocoon with him. I, I don't know. That would I be. Don't, I don't know enough about Adam because Warlock he is or communicating Captain Marvel for with me her. To... Nick Fury has that pager, you yeah. know, and he's obviously, and you see the little Danvers icon logo come up. Which, by the way, as a Captain Marvel fan, huge fan you are. A huge fan. Yeah. She is my favorite superhero. I am so excited because it is so hard to find. Captain Marvel merch. Mm-hmm. I have a tank top. I paid fifty dollars for it. <laughs> I have a tank top and I have a Tsum Tsum, and that was a weird find, which is a type of pillow at Target of all places. Yeah. And it was funny because I remember as I was buying it, there was this little kid who was like, "Mom, who's that little boy?" Like, and I was like, "No, that's Captain Marvel with the motherfucking mohawk." <laughs> and you so, have two of her pops, the little pops. Yeah, yeah, but it's very rare that you you find mm-hmm. merchandise. And for that's going to change. And it's going, that's to, going change to change so drastically. <laughs> Very quickly next year. So, I think in a nutshell, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of unanswered questions yeah. that we're not going to have answered for another yeah. year. And we and we were talking earlier, like, oh, where do you think this is going to go? No fucking clue. No, no idea where they're going to go with this. We know Captain Marvel is going to be involved. We have a pretty good idea Adam Warlock is going to be mm-hmm. involved. I'm hoping that down- Ant-Man and Hawkeye come back. Ant-Man and Hawkeye got to come back while Wasp. we're out of all of these other people. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I wish is that Doctor Strange had told somebody what was going to happen. <laughs> somebody. Anybody. Yeah. It just, just write it down or some shit, man. Yeah. Um, but we have no idea what's going to happen. We have no idea how it's going to happen. But I do believe in my heart of hearts that Thanos will be defeated. Not necessarily that there's anything morally wrong with what he's done, because that's a big thing that's going on about the internet. Hashtag Thanos wasn't wrong. <laughs> or Thanos did nothing wrong is a, is a yeah. big thing. Um, no. But there's, there's so much more discussion we could have. We could probably sit here and talk for another hour and a half. About Absolutely. the ethics behind I think we should. I think we should have an episode like that. We can like do that. another one, yeah. Yeah, we, we could absolutely. Of, 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 of spoilerful, let's talk about Thanos. Yes. Yeah. 
Now, Let's I talk about too, Ben Nos. Now, this is assuming some characters come back, but Civil War Two is probably... I love that comic arc. I have it upstairs. It's one it's, of my favorites. It's a much shorter one than the first Civil yeah, War. Yeah, it's not... It's a much more self-contained thing. Uh-huh. But it's a really cool thing. It's really awesome. And I'm wondering, now that the universe, the MCU, is expanding to that point, because, you know, with the Defenders, with, with the Runaways, with all these small little characters, with all these big characters, and now that... Marvel has bought the rights to Fox and so the X Men. I yep. wonder if we're I, I going to see that. I think we're going to see, see some much bigger things in not maybe not in the next couple of years, but like shortly after that. That's when we're going to start yep. seeing so around like the twenty twenty two. I think. I was also thinking just a little bit, and I know it's probably not going to happen. It's just one of these little things in my head. I'm like, all right, so we can use X Men now, and there's some really crazy shit going on with time. And with reality yeah. and with dimensions, mm -hmm. who's to say that we don't see a goddamn kinda, mutant yeah. like that it doesn't all just like come crashing back right. at the end? Like, we might see X Men in mm -hmm. the next Avengers movie. It's a long shot, it's a real yeah. long shot, but writing wise, people have done crazier shit with reality and That's time true. in movies. Or furthermore, so, this is probably another long shot, but one reason that makes me, one thing that makes me sort of okay with Gamora being dead is since they have X Men now, like, can we talk about Star Lord and Kitty Pride? Like, yeah. one of my favorite comic romances. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, that, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Or they might just reboot X Men altogether, which I wouldn't be upset about. I wouldn't yeah. be. I'm not either. That, I, and I feel like the other X Men have had their movies runs. that I really enjoyed, and some of them that I thought Ooh, were real shit. They were painful. And and if but, they just go ahead and just bring X Men into the MCU, mm -hmm. it, can they can find a way Jackman, to explain though. it. Like yeah. even if they're transported to an alternate dimension where all these characters are still alive and everything's the exact same except they were mutants for years and yada yeah. yada yada, I'd be totally fine with that. I'd be fine with them rebooting the franchise and bringing the X Men into the MCU where they belong. Yes. Now, I do think if they do that, they need to wait a little bit longer. Like yeah. we need to have some time with no X Men movies going yep. on, and so somebody we needs can to kind of push that off, and then like we're somebody start needs to strong. email Hugh Jackman, let him know he won't be in the MCU. It'll for be a while. A... No, Hugh Jackman play Old Man, Old Man Logan. Old Man he Logan. could, <laughs> but my only issue is is that it it brings too much connection. It does. Back. That's it, no, you're right. it, it would be like it would be like if you had, uh, you know, um, the spider like Spider Man Homecoming, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, J J uh, uh, J Jonah Jameson mm -hmm. um, played by the dude who played him in the Sam Raimi Spider Man. He should always play. He should because he was the best At rendition of him. Yeah, yeah, J K Simmons. He is but so fantastic. If I saw J K Simmons in Spider Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. I would be transported to the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. It would, it would kind of, it would split the universe a little bit, and I don't like it. Right. I feel like you have to recast. You wouldn't be able to bring Hugh Jackman on, even as Old Man Logan in the MCU, yeah. without continuity issues in the audience's mind with the other Foxes. You're right. That's true. We can get on more of that on a later, later, later video. I think um, we've uh, we spoiled plenty of shit. Yep. Uh, Basically, in a nutshell, at the end, Thanos wins, lots of people die. Yes. Um, if you had to figure that out, that's what happened. Thanos snaps his fingers. Uh, I did want to talk about how charred and destroyed the Infinity the Gauntlet, Gauntlet was. Yep. But yeah. the, the stones were still intact. The Gauntlet, I think, was just destroyed by the mere strain of using all of those Could stones be. at the same time. Um, but I feel like we can talk about that a little bit later on yep. once we're confident that most of our audience has seen the movie. I'm pretty confident that most of our audience has seen the movie anyway. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah. What did you learn, Dave? We're not doing that. This All right, fine. This is a Box podcast thing. We're not done <laughs> I'm going to say, if you have any, any questions or comments about what we've said or if you have other ideas that you want to talk about, please leave them in the comments. Absolutely, and, and we'd love to go love through and get into your conspiracy yeah. theories. Absolutely. Hey, uh, so hey, what, Dave. What, what do you think things are going to go? What are the chances we can like splice in a few screenshots here? You know, like do uh, like. Let me do more work. Yeah, <laughs> make it more engaging, Dave. I'll see what I can do about that. All right. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, check out our Patreon, uh, patreoncom slash uh and the website talkybox.net. Um, anything else? That's it. Have That's a it. super day. Super <laughs> duper. <laughs> to infinity and beyond or something. Or something yeah. like that. That's something else. We'll work on it. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs>